Apparently one way to potentially trigger a Texan is to call this a Bowie knife. It's named after the famous knife fighter James Bowie, aka Jim Bowie, whose name was apparently pronounced that way, lived between 1796 and 1836. And this is the D-Guard Bowie by Windless Steel Crafts, which one of my viewers kindly sent to me. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Uh, it took me a little while to get around to it, but here we are. So Confederate soldiers preferred these over their shorter knives used in the North. Apparently the bigger the better. Of course, ain't compensating for nothing. During the American Civil War, the South experienced an arms shortage. So these were made as backup weapons, often from files or rasps. Some of them are crudely made, others much more carefully crafted by uh, experienced, skilled blacksmiths. Here's an interesting design with an additional knuckle guard. So these were weapons, first and foremost, but also tools. According to historian Russell T. Johnson, the Bowie knife must be long enough to use as a sword, sharp enough to use as a razor, wide enough to use as a paddle, and heavy enough to use as a hatchet. Speaking of the weight, this one is 537 grams or 22 ounces on my scale, which seems like the perfect weight for it. It has a certain amount of heft that you want for chopping kindling, firewood, underbrush, etc. but and also to deliver powerful cuts in combat. But at the same time, it is very light and agile. So easy to wear, carry around, easy to use. I couldn't find out for certain which steel was used for the blade. Generally, windless steel craft seems to use high carbon steel between 1065 and 1095. Now for a blade of this size, 1085 or 95 would make sense. Uh, it's short enough that you can get away with higher carbon content in the blade without risking it to become too brittle for the length. So that would mean uh, superior edge retention over a steel with lower carbon content. But either way, I said I can't say for sure, it doesn't say on the website, neither on Cult of Athena nor on Windless Steelcrafts on their website. This one comes with a sharp edge, but I can't make any certain statements about it because for one, I'm not the original owner. And also, I've been racking my brain trying to remember if I sharpened it. You'd think you would remember something like that, but I had a few days back when I still had the workshop where I just grabbed a bunch of blade and brought them to the workshop and, and just sharpened them. So it kind of all blurs together. I don't remember do, spending a lot of time on this, if any. I may not have sharpened it. If I did, then I only honed the edge some more for tatami cutting. But as I, I can't really remember 100% for sure. When cutting soaked tatami mats, it performed even better than I expected, as long as the edge alignment is good, which is, a little bit more challenging than it could be simply because the thickness and the width of the handle are pretty close. It's not exactly cylindrical, but it's sort of approaching cylindrical. So that means it doesn't give you quite as much of a feel for the edge alignment as a grip that's wider, like significantly wider than it is thick. But either way, it's still fine. You can definitely still feel the edge alignment and it's pretty good. And overall the grip is nicely shaped. I appreciate that it swells a little bit toward the end here. Now, of course, the D-guard would prevent the hand from slipping off anyway, but this adds to the secure grip and also makes it a little bit more comfortable there. It is quite a comfortable grip, nicely sanded. So it's smooth, but not a slippery surface and it's well fitted, especially considering the price range. You can't expect the same level of precision that you get from a knife or short sword costing several hundred dollars. Uh, this one here between 70 and 80 US dollars is really quite affordable for a sword at least. And I would argue for a knife of this size as well. Always depends on how you want to look at it, of course. I also did some wood chopping with it since it was also used as an everyday tool, which worked quite well. Now I went easy at first and ramped it up. 
So the wood that I was chopping there was dead and thoroughly soaked, so it wasn't too terribly hard on the blade. But of course, depending on how hard you chop and uh, how good the alignment is, if it gets stuck in the wood and gets twisted, etc., that can still put quite a bit of stress on it. I also smacked the flat of the blade against branches, not so much to simulate a parry with a flat, since I wouldn't expect a lot of finesse swordsmanship during the American Civil War, but to see if there's any issue with the way the hilt is constructed and fitted, because that transfers a lot of vibration through it, and you can usually tell if something is off. So I've had some D-guard knives and swords which loosened up on both sides, of the guard both on top here because it wasn't tightly enough fitted and especially also at the bottom if the, the tang wasn't peened tightly enough. This one here clearly is. After the chopping, it's still rock solid. There's not a hint of play anywhere, no rattle whatsoever. So that's clearly very well done. And I can appreciate that, even though rattling guards were not uncommon in history, it's still nice to have something that is solidly enough assembled that it won't just start to rattle on you with use. So no complaints here at all. In fact, I really have no complaints overall. I can't really find anything about this that I would find worth criticizing in the price range at all. The sheath is very simple. It's just leather, but it does have metal fittings. So fit is pretty good. It doesn't rattle a whole lot. That's, it's not the tightest fit that like you can shake it out, but it's pretty good. This is really just for storage and transportation. It doesn't have a belt loop or anything. This is very simple but you know, still nice that it has steel fittings. So yeah, not too much to be said about it. It's better than nothing, I suppose, but not really worth mentioning. I can't say too much about the historical accuracy. I looked at a number of pictures of originals and clearly there was significant variation in, in blade shape and handle shape and length, etc. cetera. Uh, this one seems to fit within the ones that I, I can see. Um, now, I don't think the originals had mirror polish, at least as far as I could tell from the pictures. And of course, mirror polish is always a bit of a personal opinion kind of deal. Some people really like it, others don't. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it because I, I have a bit of an association with cheap wall hangers. But of course, that's subjective bias because there are plenty of uh, mid-range and high-end quality knives and swords with mirror finish. So yeah, this is really just a matter of preference. What I can definitely say is that this is very durable. From the chopping tests, no scratching, no damage to the edge, nothing going on here. So that's nice. It's not particularly prone to corrosion either. They ground a swedge on the blade here. If you wanted to turn this into a fully sharp edge, it would take either a belt sander or filed slash sandpaper and a lot of elbow grease. I think that would take quite a while. Although with filed, it's probably not too bad. So you could turn this into an edge. I like the way they shape the steel bar for the guard. It tapers here, then it swells again in the center, tapers down again and widens once more right there. On the other side, you have a bit of a knob here on the upswept quillon. So looks nice. As I said, handles very well, performs well. So I think for the price, this is very easy to recommend. I don't think you would regret buying this if this is the kind of knife slash short sword that you're interested in. I'll leave the link in the description down below. And apparently at Cult of Athena, it's back ordered. That could mean that it's discontinued or it could simply mean that they don't know when or if they are going to get them back in stock. I'll also leave the link to um, Windows Steelcraft's website. So maybe you can still find it somewhere. If not, you can keep an eye on it or for it you can keep an eye on the used market. That's what I'm trying to say. 
So before I twist my tongue some more, let's leave it at that. That's all I've got to say. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. There, single-handed cheating for you. That's how the pros do it. It's really not, I'm just messing around. Knifing around. Oh, this is terrible. Definitely had better outtakes. We're made by ex-skilled, ex-skilled? It's either experienced or skilled, it's not ex-skilled. I mean, I guess if you used to have a skill and then you lost it somehow, now you're ex-skilled. Whatever. Thank you.